Right guys, I thought I'd do a little bit something for National Apprenticeship Week. Obviously, I think this video will be going up on the Tuesday. I think it started on the Monday. I just thought I'd do a little bit of a chat about my, my apprenticeship and my beliefs on the apprenticeships. So I was quite lucky uh, when I left school. Obviously, my dad um, worked for the company, which we've subsequently taken over. And so I was quite lucky. I sort of walked straight into apprenticeships, but it's not always that easy. Um, when, you, when you're in school, obviously, it's, you're sort of unsure what you're going to be doing when you leave, whether you're going to be staying on at sixth form, whether you're going to be staying or going to college. Obviously, schools are, nowadays, I find, they kind of want you to stay on at sixth form. I don't know, you kind of get led down that path. Um, because I think, I don't know whether that's easier or whether they get more money from that. I think sort of vocational skills like plumbing, electrics, whatever you want to do, they kind of, I found anyway, when I was at school, they kind of led you away from them sort of trades. Um, but I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted, I wanted to do plumbing, which is obviously what I've, what I've become. I've become a plumber, I've got my gas, I've done my oil. So as I say, I was quite lucky. Um, I would say if you do want to do an apprenticeship, you do sort of need to start looking early when you're like in year 11, this sort of time, obviously, because we're already looking, but well, we've already taken on our apprenticeships for September already. So if you were looking for an apprenticeship, you need to start early. But one thing I would say is don't panic if you don't get an apprenticeship. There's still options for you. Uh, the best thing you can probably do if you don't get an apprenticeship when you leave year 11 is go to college and do your trade, get on your full-time course. And then we've taken on like lads who have been on, um, not just lads, obviously girls, girls can do plumbing as well um, or any trade. But we take people on who have done full-time courses for a year or two at college and then we take them on to apprenticeship then. It shows they're dedicated, obviously they might have the driving license then as well, obviously it makes you more desirable. So the one thing I would say is obviously don't panic if you don't get an apprenticeship when you leave school. Obviously it helps if you've got an apprenticeship. If you, Obviously the best way I think of getting an apprenticeship, obviously if, if you know somebody or your mates, with, you know your dad's mate's a plumber, that's going to be your best option probably to, to get an apprenticeship. The other thing I would say is you could try the bigger companies as well because they obviously always take on an, an, an allotted number of apprentices each year and obviously they get government funding I believe for taking on the apprenticeships. So that, that's another route you could try. The other thing I would say is I think schools, well certainly when I was at school, they get you to write CVs and then try and get you to send them to employers. We get a lot of CVs sent to us and I obviously, I obviously read them all but at the back of your mind you don't give them as much attention as somebody's coming and seeing you. Like if somebody actually comes and knocks on your office door, you seem to give them more time and attention than if you've just got a piece of paper through the post with somebody's name on it. I don't know, maybe that's just me, that's maybe just my opinion, but I always think when I'm looking at somebody, obviously they've got the confidence to actually come and knock on my door um, to ask me for a job, basically ask me for an apprenticeship. So I would, I would say, I know, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it when I was that age to go and knock on somebody's door, you know, an office door or something and ask them for a job basically. I probably wouldn't have had the confidence. But that could be a route obviously into the industry, you know, it's just having that confidence and the belief, you know, even if it's just a case of can I drop this CV off it, you know, and if you consider consider looking at it, you know, that is better in my opinion than putting it in the post because it shows your confidence, you know, it shows you're actually committed, it shows you want to be there, if that makes sense. So I would say do that, maybe. Um, obviously, it's really competitive, so if you can stand out above and beyond, you know, everybody else, you're going to have the best chance possible for yourself. So I would try that definitely if you're struggling to sort of get noticed. Obviously, if you are lucky enough to get an apprenticeship, in whatever you've chosen, you don't have to be plumbing. You can get apprenticeships and all sorts of stuff these days. You've got to be committed. You can't be like at what I call a boomtown rat. You know, not turning up on a Monday, for instance, because you're just going to get left. You're just going to get left outside, basically. You know, you're not going to be progressing at the rate at which your boss wants you to progress. Basically, all all I want is somebody that's committed. I don't care their ability at all in plumbing because I can teach them that. I want somebody dedicated and committed who's going to turn up, you know, who's going to work hard, you know, you're going to get a lot of mundane jobs 
when you first start it's just is what it is because a lot of stuff you can't do until you're older especially if you're 16 obviously you can't use a cauldron or anything like that till you're 18 so you're not going to you're going to get a lot of sweeping up you're going to get a lot of you know clipping pipes and stuff like that you're just going to but you can build up your confidence and your ability as you go along so don't be alarmed if you're getting a lot of what i call the boring jobs you might get a lot of pipe lagging and stuff like that it's not it's not an offense it's just because your boss or your employee will be trying to find your ability and work your confidence if that makes sense you've got to be confident in what you do so yeah i would say don't panic if you're getting a lot of a lot of mundane jobs i mean it might just be a case that you fitted a boiler and you've been helping you you know you're doing i used to do a lot of power flushing when i was an apprentice i used to get sent in to do the power flushing it's probably a boring job but it's, it's a job that's got to be done correctly um it is a job i could be left alone and doing doing and get it done properly and he could trust me and that was it you know but i say it might just be a case of you popping around and bleeding the radiators after you fitted a boiler or checking to make sure they're all working or it could be anything you might do the contents you you might might be doing the boiler so as i say don't don't panic if you're not doing all the interesting jobs at the start because that will come when you when you're more trusted if that makes sense another thing obviously if you get an apprenticeship you really need to concentrate at college college is not turn up one day a week and have a laugh with your mates it is hard it's not it shouldn't be hard work it should be seen as it should be seen as a good thing to do and to be doing but you do need to concentrate you do need to knuckle down because your boss will see all of your results you know they'll see if you've failed an exam obviously people fail exams it's not the end of the world but you need to show that you're progressing if that makes sense you don't want to be failing every single exam time after time after time because it's just going to look bad on you Obviously, don't panic if you do fail in an exam. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but you need to realise what you're doing. Are you, are you liking about what your mates or are you listening to what the guy at the front of the room is telling you? Because you know, he's teaching you your regulations and stuff like that. Your, your boss will teach you, or whoever you're working with, will teach you how to fit the radiators, but he's teaching you the regulations of systems, you know. It, you know basically all the important stuff that you need to know like drains and stuff like that gradients you know clipping distance distances you know everything that you should be taking with you as in your career you're learning in them years at college obviously you never stop learning stuff gets updated but you need to be listening to the guy at the front of the room in order to pass your exams so uh, college is not about you know turning up at nine o'clock having a lane in the morning um, and then just having a laugh with your mates for six hours. It's not about that. It's about knuckling down and learning the job. Another thing I would say is don't don't be worried. It's a big step up going into work when you leave school. It's a massive difference. You don't realise at school you get told basically what to do. You've got to be at maths at you know, you know at that time. You know English after that, then geography or whatever whatever you're doing. Whereas work is different to that. Basically, you'll be expected to turn up at your time, whether you start at half seven, seven or eight, you know, whatever time you'll be expected. And then you'll just be sent off with your mate and it might be getting back late, you know, it is, it is different. So it's a big difference to school as to what the workplace is. Obviously, you, you'll be treated like an adult, which is it's kind of hard when you're 16, 17, when you've come out of school to be treated like that is completely different to what to what you expect well it was for me anyway i'm only talk, sort of talking from my experiences here but yeah it's a big step up in, into work and obviously you get paid for it as well which is fantastic obviously your money will be lower i think when i started i can't remember what i started on now but obviously there's government minimums that sort of your boss will pay so don't be alarmed if you're only on like i don't know what the minimum is uh, like 450 an hour or something don't be alarmed if you're on that because obviously your money will go with your experience you just got to be proud and pleased that you've actually got a job you know and you're learning a great industry in my opinion i always say to all my apprentices when they start if they mess up say if you spill something on somebody's carpet you know tell me you know tell me straight away and we can deal with it we can either we can try and clean it ourselves we can get a cleaner in or we can replace the carpet if we need to it's not the end of the world so as you say if you mess up which you will do everybody messes up i mess up all the time you need to tell your your boss or your supervisor because if you don't and the customer rings the office and say oh you know you've left the right mess that looks bad on you it looks bad on the company so if you do mess up which you will do it's inevitable you'll mess up at some point 
yeah, just just let your supervisor know basically because you don't want to be going home worried i think we've all been there where we've messed up on a friday you know i don't know you put your foot through the ceiling and you've not said anything and you've been home worried all night or all weekend because you think you're going to get the sack monday morning at the end of the day it's just a bit of plasterboard you know what i mean the ceiling can be repaired you know i remember i had a lad with me years ago and we went up in a roof and i forgot to tell him because he'd never been up in a roof before that you can't you can't walk on the plasterboard luckily he didn't go through i was like what are you doing what are you doing and he was walking on all the plasterboard <laughs> but i didn't tell him he didn't know so it's one of them you know if you mess up don't be worried you know you're not going to get the sack i promise you you will not get the sack if you tell your boss you know i've just built you know some your water on a, a carpet or something like that you won't sack you you'll probably laugh at you but you won't sack you if he sacks you then he's an idiot anyway but yeah i promise you just don't be worried don't take anything home take, don't take any stress this is a like a, a great opportunity you've been given if you've got a job so as i say just be honest just be clear and if you're not sure about something just ask your boss or ask your mate whoever you're working with and he'll tell you you know it's not you're not expected to know anything in the first year you know obviously you build up your confidence and your ability as you go along that's why the apprenticeship is four years you know or what i think it is it was when i did it i mean i was on my own after year two going into the third year at college i've got my own van but don't be alarmed if you run a job and you've no idea what's going on ask as many questions don't be in the corner on your phone talking to your mate on instagram or whatever you're doing you need to be focused on even if you're just passing him tools or you know putting a, putting sets of clips down the wall for a radiator drop anything whatever you're doing you need to be fully concentrated on the job in hand not on your phone you know talking to your mate or whatever organizing your weekend because that's just going to look bad on you obviously if you're in a customer's house just be polite and courteous obviously that's that's common sense really but don't be don't be don't be obviously rude don't be swearing don't be chatting to your mate like you're down the pub you know you want to be please and thank yous and all that sort of stuff you know so it's just something you don't really get taught any of them life skills at school but that's how it is in a customer's house obviously you protect the property you, you like the customer that's how it is anyway that's how i think it should be right i think the final point i want to make is if you obviously if you do become a plumber it's a great industry to be in this industry is ever changing we've got so much to look forward to in the future obviously with potential hydrogen obviously heat pumps i've got opinions on heat pumps which i'm not going to go into in this video um, so yeah this industry is rapidly changing there's going to be so much to learn in the future which is going to be fantastic um so yeah if you do manage to get into the industry and if you want to get into the industry you will make it i promise you you know if you want something hard enough you know even if you don't get an apprenticeship when you leave school there's still opportunities for you down the line you know as i said earlier you can go you can go get a full-time you can get on a full-time college course and then you might be able to get an apprenticeship you know once you can drive once you once you've got a little bit of plumbing skill and knowledge you're a little bit more desirable than just a 16 year old leaving school who says he wants to be a plumber but he's never done any plumbing before in his life if you've done two years at college on a full-time course um and then gone into the industry it gives you a little bit of hands-on experience you know you're not completely new to everything on day one that that guy who's with you hasn't got to teach you you know how to hold a hammer or you know you've got some experience you're a little bit older you can drive you've got a little you've got a few more life skills so yeah don't panic if you don't get a job i think i'm going to reiterate that point you know because not everybody is going to get an apprenticeship because there aren't enough placements basically and obviously with the the economy as well you know some smaller companies won't take on apprenticeships apprentices so as i say don't panic but if you want to succeed you will succeed i promise you that if you are lucky enough to get a job just stick with it there will be days where you think why the hell am i doing this because everybody gets days like that in whatever job they do you know whether you're working you know i don't know selling used cars or whatever you might get days where you think oh you know what am i doing this for you know i could easy ways to make a living but plumbing is promise you is one of the most rewarding jobs um, that you could ever be in and it's, you've, got, you've got great skills that you can adapt into other stuff so you do pick up i can wire heating systems and stuff like that. it's just all through picking stuff up you know see every opportunity is in, as a thing to gain knowledge from you know if you've got electricians on site look look at what they're doing as well you know how they're doing their job because it's going to help you 
along the line, you know, even if you've got to wire your own house, you know, you pick up contacts along the line. So see, every opportunity is something to learn from. You know, even if your boss sends you to help, I don't know, put a roof on or something like that. I don't know, see that as an opportunity to, to you know, prove yourself to the other lads. And basically, you're a valuable asset to the company. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a job, you're on the payroll, you know, you're the future of this industry, the apprentices are. So don't think that is a bad thing. Just because you're at the bottom, you'll eventually make it to the top. That's how the ladder system works. And um, so, yeah, as I say, if you do get a job, enjoy it. And if you don't, don't panic. I think that's the point I want to make from the video, really. Because if you want something hard enough, I promise you, you will succeed. All right, so that's probably going to be the end of the chat, really, because I think the guys just turned up where I've been waiting to get in. So yeah, as I say, uh, thank you all for watching this little bit. I'll probably put some plumbing in after this, to be fair, as well. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more uh, plumbing videos on the channel. If you did enjoy this bit, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, and I'll see you all in the episode. Right, guys, I'm back on this job today. I've just got a couple of hours left in my um, afternoon, so I thought I'd come in second fix this. Uh, basically, we've just got a pedestal, pedestal basin, uh, close couple toilet, and then just an electric shower to go on here. But Sparky's not put his cable in yet. But I did put him some conduit up. Some, I think I just used overflow. Uh, so again, looking after the electricians. Nobody thanks me for it. Um, I came a while back and did that tower rail. The radiator was radiator was under the window. We put that that tower rail on there. Uh, put the bath in. It's one of these tin baths. Uh, not really a fan of them, but that's what they wanted. Um, so yeah, we got all that. That all done. Uh, it's pushing it quite a part, so I just use a short bit in between solvent. Uh, hopefully I've got an adapter for this. I don't normally use push fit, but should have a mechanical one in the van, hopefully. I forgot to pick one up. Um, so yeah, just, I'll probably leave the shower off until he gets his cable in. I'm not silicon anything up. Uh, so I'll just get the toilet and basin in. And uh, yeah, I'll crack on. So just to unbox all your stuff, I've just picked this up from the merchants, everything's wet through, so obviously everything's kept outside. Just make sure nothing's, nothing's smashed, obviously the basin, we check the damage on that as well. And it's just the packaging. Obviously don't fit anything if it's scratched or anything cracked, obviously. Just got to put our ball valve and push valve in. It is a compliant ball valve because it's not going to just full stem. So we've been having trouble with these, like the rubbers leaking, where they just up and down, and people put the blue chemical blocks in the cisterns, and then it's siphoning back into the main. Um, so yeah, it's just something you've got to watch for. You really should have an AG air gap. Uh, so we'll put this one together. This one's fine. Uh, yeah. I don't know if the camera really picks the wind up, but it's blowing like a Force Nine gale out there. Could be worse though. That's that's my view for the next couple of hours anyway. I'll be gazing out the window. But yeah, it's really, really blowing. I'll get back to fitting my toilet now. So on these, you just go uh, metal washer, then rubber washer, and then underneath, uh, in between your system, I always put, put a metal washer and a back nut like that, a little hex nut, and then underneath, just one of them. It, normally they don't leak. So yeah, that's how you make them up. Basically, get everything made up, put all your taps, all your waste and everything in your basin, get all your system put together, and it's just a simple case of fitting it then. So we're using the new Viva Pan connector, just a straight one. You can get like offset ones of these, uh, like angled ones, get all sorts of bits and bobs nowadays, and obviously you can get flexes as well, but this one should go uh, basically straight back into my old drain. With a bit of luck. Uh, I think the Coal feeds on the left on these new ones, but we'll just bring that across. I could, I could lift the floor, up, but I honestly don't think it'll matter because it'll all be hidden. So as long as it looks okay, I'll be happy. That's what it should look like when it's all pushed back. There's so no gaps here, or anything. All fully, fully inserted. So it might need to trim a little bit off uh, the soil pipe length, depending if the system fits flush back to the wall. But I'll try the system on next. Then what I'll generally do is level the pan up, because the floor is literally all over the place, you probably can't pick it up on the camera. Uh, pack the pan up, get it level, get it solid, and then drill the system back. 
that's how I normally do mine anyway. Especially on these older houses where the floors are, you know, it could be half inch difference between the left hand, hand of the pan and the right hand, so just do your best. Right, so the systems all fit in nicely back to the wall with no gaps. Um, that's basically what you've got to look for. Now I've started tightening the these two wing nuts here basically to clamp the system to the pan. Uh, so it's just a case of getting it nice and tight and then you can level it level it all up then. But yeah, um, as I say, then I've just got the cold feed. What I generally do is I use stainless or brass screws in the back. So it makes it easier for the next man to get it off basically because the screw won't all be rusted. So a bit concerned is about where the cold feed runs. It looks pretty much in line with the screw pipe. We'll have a look at that in a second anyway. I'll get the, as I say, I'll get it all screwed back to the wall and generally fix it to the floor last. Right, so we've leveled the pan and the system up. So what I'm going to do now is fix it back to the wall. I just drill straight through here. And then I'll fix it to the floor and then I'll pipe the cold feed up then. So nice easy job. So if I can, I'll always use brass screws to screw my systems and pans down to the floor or stainless. Just makes it easy for the next man if he ever needs to get the system off. So yeah, look top tip. My mate who taught me, if I ever got caught using steel screws, he wouldn't be very happy. He said it makes it a nightmare for the next man. So just use them ones. You can use like the plastic spacers. That for the, you know you can get the plastic spacers for the clips. Sometimes I'll use them as a thing or like a rubber washer. But yeah, always use brass screws or stainless. So I'll use these these ones, uh, I don't know what you call them, just fixing the pan to the floor. Uh, a lot cheaper than the Fisher ones, you don't obviously get the screws, but you can buy like a pack of a hundred for about a fiver. On, on this sort of pan, no ideal really. Obviously you wouldn't really use them on like fixing through the side or anything like that, but they're fine on sort of jobs like this, so just keep them in your van, handy. So, yeah, and again, a lot cheaper than the Fisher ones. The Fisher ones you pay like five pound a pack for and you end up just robbing these out of them. So, just buy them in bulk. Right, so the pan's basically all fitted now, it's absolutely rock solid. Um, so I've just got the cold feed to do. We've also got a nice overhab down here already. All the regulation states is that it must be close as practically possible to the float operated valve. Um, so down here is fine, obviously it's serviceable. So what I'll do is I'll bring this round and then just connect it onto this side. Um, you don't actually need to, the regulations say you don't actually need valves on wash basins, but it's obviously always good practice. Uh, but it's not actually a regulation. The only regulation is on float operated valves. The good thing about these vans is on windy days like today, you've got the safety catch. You can just basically slam that and the, the door won't move. So there's no risk of trapping your fingers or anything like that. So it is a good design. And you just release that and you can shut the door. So yeah, really good on windy days. So I've soldered my cold feed up out of position so I don't melt my ball valve and you can get your solder joints really nice when you solder everything out of position. Uh, so I just need to make sure this fits, uh, tighten it up and uh, should be good to turn the water on. Right, so the cold feed's all connected. Just be really careful when you're tightening onto plastic threads not to cross thread. They are super easy to do. Or oh, it's always worth keeping a brass shank on in your van. So we just bent all that round. It's all hidden by the toilet anyway. So I think, I think that looks acceptable. Uh, just got the loose heat to do. I'll turn the water on next. Uh, check, check the float, make sure it shuts off on the water line, and we should be good. And then I've just got the basin to do then. Right, so we've flushed the toilet a few times to make sure we've got no leaks. I actually quite like these um, ones where they don't like lock onto the siphon, because sometimes they're a pain to, to actually get off, you know, where they connect through. So these ones just basically, you set your things up, you set your little feet up, and then that just clamps to the underside of the system. Lid. So if you ever need to get the lid off, you just, have, you just can lift it off and it all comes up in one. So the ones where they like push on and press on, I find them a pain. After a few years, you can't get them off, you end up breaking bits. Yeah, these ones are quite good. Just the arm, each one. Right, first thing I'll do with my basin is um, check for damage. First thing I'll do with my basin again is check for damage. Then I'll put my Wasting, everybody does these differently. I always do mine with silicon, you do them how you want. Some people use their basin mate, some people use um, plumber's mate. I always do, I've always done mine with silicon, never had a problem. What I'll do is then put the taps in, get the get the waste on, then I'll put my trap on, and then basically I'll set it, set it up on the pedestal and then get it fixed to the wall then. And then I'll do all the pipe work after. So I just have to find an adapter out the van for this. That's push fit, I'll use a mechanical, probably a mechanical elbow. It'll just come up and then in. 
So that's the plan anyway. Uh, even the best of us get leaks as well, in case we're joining all the blue. Basically, I had a slight leak on my uh, on the ball valve connection onto the where it goes through the into the toilet. So I've just tightened it up a little bit. But what I did is I took it out, clean the rubber up on it because I didn't know if it was a rubbish rubber. So that's why there's a bit of water on the floor. I've just put the blue roll down just to make sure nothing's dripping. But everything seems fine now. If you've not seen the Armand jaw dropper, I really, really rate these. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, I did a little tour review on them, but yeah, basically they just lock straight underneath. I know this one's easy to get to. Um, I'm crap at filming, by the way. Basically, that locks underneath, and you can just tighten on. But they are brilliant. I've had them. Well, basically, I got them when I first started. I've been coming like 14 years, so you just get a little box with them. You get the basin and the bath ones. So yeah, fantastic. I've, Basically, that's the only basin which I've got. Some people say they don't fit the speed fit one, speed fit tap connectors, but normally you can get them with grips anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all I use. So the basin baths also fits compression nuts. So if you get a compression nut like in a boiler in a tight spot, that fits that as well. There's, well, yeah, it pretty much fits a lot of stuff in plumbing. So I think I paid about 49 quid, I reckon. It was quite a few years ago. I got them from Plumbing Centre, they had them on the counter. But yeah, I use them all the time, pretty much. I've done like 30, 40 pairs of taps a day in schools with these, and it's never ever let me down, so good bit of care. It's the Armand Jewel Dropper. Right, I've just sat my basin onto my pedestal. Sometimes it's a bit of a job to level these up because some of this pottery you buy nowadays is, is terrible. Um, basically, we're checking for level that way. We'll also Check that way. Obviously, the front needs jacking up yet, but I normally gain that on my fixing, so it wants to come up a good 10 at the front. You're also checking, obviously, for the squareness of your pedestal and obviously how it's sitting. So, basically, it all wants to look nice and square. I'm using flexes on this just to basically save a little bit of time. Sometimes I'll bend it all up, sometimes I'll use flexes. But yeah, basically, I just like to get my basin all set. And then I'll fix it back to the wall so it's all bolted in then and I'll get everything piped up. So I've got my basin all leveled up. It's absolutely solid as a rock. You could swing a well you could swing off that if you wanted to. Taps all tightened up. I forgot to put my little plug and chain bit in, but I can get to that in a second. So yeah, happy, happy with the how level it is. Sometimes they are a job to get them level, but I'm happy with this one. As I say, it's nice and solid. So I've just got the taps to connect up in the waist. And that's all done then. Well, we just turned our service valves on. We'll just do this through here. Make sure we've got hot on the left. We don't need to boil it on, actually. Should be hot on the left. I'll double check that anyway before I leave, obviously. I just need to put my overflow thing in. I'll fill the waste up a couple of times and um, make sure we've got no leaks and everything. But other than that, all should be good. So yeah, it looks all right. They're just basically pretty standard. I stand up, bobbin basins. It's all securely fixed. Uh, we've got the toilet in. So yeah, that's all we've been asked to do. So I'll clean, make sure the skirting board and everything's cleaned off. I'll have a look at the shower next, but it's getting quite late in the day. So what I might do is just set it up, make sure it does cover the hole. If not, I'll have to change that tile. But I need the electrician to get his cable in. So yeah, pretty much all they wanted me to get done was the toilet and basin. So I've done all that. So yeah. These roads are absolutely filthy at this time of year on these country roads. So I always give my lights and my number plate and everything a wipe. Otherwise, you're not, you're not being able to see where you're going and end up getting in trouble for not having number plates. Yeah, absolutely caked. 